how many times did you happen to be very confident about what you have just studied before actually realize and sometimes later that you can't remember what you initially thought was so easy. Information is fuzzy or maybe looks quite clear, but as you try to explain to somebody else what you have learned, you can't organize the stream of ideas coherently and compellingly. Before illustrating the techniques, I must talk about a few key principles that affect memory. The first principle says, uh, I'm not talking about Elon Musk's first principle, okay? The degree of interest, passion, or appeal exerted by what you're studying determines the degree to which you are going to recall the material. When I was studying engineering, uh, there were subjects that I found boring and I remember it was more demanding to recall information because that was not linked to my soul. So the study material did not kind of resonate with, with it. And don't think that you are going to apply memo techniques and you solve the problem because memo techniques, which represent a fantastic tool for recalling tons of data, are still affected by how much that subject resonates with us. When a subject resonates with us, chances are we activate more easily our brain and get highly engaged. We tend to spend more time thinking of that topic and linking it to real life issues. This obviously raises the question, what if I have chosen the wrong path? In this case, you have to gather more material on the internet, understand what's the career path that more likely resonates with your soul and change direction for sure. The second principle is remove distractions. Okay, this is a key point. Pick up your phone and throw it out of the window. Forget about social media and focus on what you're reading. People who look smarter and recall so easily what you think the, is so complex actually do one thing differently from you. They hold attention for a longer per period of time. It's a fact. It makes no sense to deny this truth. So once we set these two important rules, let's jump into the four techniques you can use to improve your memory when you read. If you want to directly step right away onto a particular technique, give a look at the timestamps below. The first technique I use to facilitate uh, recall when I read is to ask, in these pages, what are the prior concepts? That is, the con concepts that I have to understand well if I want to understand the whole chapter. So then I jot down key ideas which represent not a summary, but a statement that encapsulates what I have read concisely. Do this in your notebook, although you can also do it in your book directly. A second technique is the Thomas Frank self-critique technique. This is very good if you need to store in your memory a presentation you are preparing for a workshop or a conference. It is amazingly effective to record yourself so that you can watch how you talk your body language and judge if your explanations are compelling. If not, what would you do better next time? I have talked about this technique in a video where I talk about the Feynman technique revisited. If you want to know how to apply Feynman's technique differently and more effectively than what 90% of videos do, give it a look. A third tactic that I have been using with a great success entails recalling what I have read well taking long walks. Science tells us that taking a walk is enormously effective for creativity because it shifts attention from a narrow point to a larger one. Conversely, bringing your visual focus to a specific location prepares our brain and place it, places it into a state of readiness, which is very important for keeping high focus. So remember, take long productive walks and try to recall what you have read or studied in your mind. Moreover, walking gives you the opportunity to visit different places, sit on a bench and see what's going on around you. Changing location seems to promote the process of knowledge assimilation. A fourth important technique is the link method. According to scientists, Experts possess a higher short and long-term memory compared to novice learners and part of this is due to their skills to free up space deputed for additional information. Consider the following random words. Horseshoe, funeral, salad, lentil, rash. Your task is to force these five words into a story using the order they are listed. My story is the following. I imagine a huge horseshoe lying down on the street emanating the typical strong horse smell. When a funeral reaches the point of the street where this huge horseshoe lies, people must stop. I imagine people crying at the funeral and the car's driver very angry getting off the car seeking to remove this horseshoe. However, 
it seems impossible. It is a problem as the funeral cannot proceed way around and consequently they decide to wait that this horseshoe gets removed. Wedding made people tired and for this reason some decide to buy a salad and lentil. They mixed all up and ate the food when their skin developed a strong rash. This created chaos, anger and frustration. This trivial story, which was built using the link method idea, represents a way of showing how it is possible to make few unrelated random words alive. At a deeper level, the story makes use of the following features. The images possess a big size. I imagine a huge horseshoe, not just a standard horseshoe. The images are associated with smelling. I imagine the strong smell of the horses. The images are emotion. People walk after the car, the driver jumps off the car angrily and <clears throat> tries to remove the horseshoe. The images have weird associations. I combine salad with lentil and I place a horseshoe on the street. That is something unheard. Recurring these features is clearly intentional because it involves all our senses. Simultaneously, leaving the story from inside recruits many neurons thereby making the words associated with our story more memorable. Another feature that I have not included but that does wonders is to deliberately explain why a given image is there. For example, I have omitted why Horseshoe was on the street. So at the beginning of the story, I might have said something like, one day after waking up, I hear, I hear a strong noise coming from the street. So I quickly go to the window and I notice a huge Minotaur, this creature, half man and half horse disparate after having lost one of its horseshoes, which reminded on the street. On top of describing a situation using all the senses, employing moving images, explaining the logic behind the scene, I might have emphasized the emotional side too. Uh, for example, I might have described more in detail people's feelings during the funeral, and I might have tried to leave this funeral as if it was a dear friend, I might have imagined myself to be extremely angry after recognizing the impossibility to move forward due to the horseshoe, etc. Our ability to store a huge amount of information is strongly determined by the degree to which we live through our perspective, the story we make up. To summarize, if you want to make memorable a certain amount of items like real images, names, words, objects, etc., we need to force them into story while leveraging the following features. Key images we choose to remember the item must be dynamic. The interplay between key images must be weird, unusual. We should be living this story using our perspectives, that is, it must be possible for us to touch things, look, taste, smell, feel, as if we were involved directly in what is going on. It seems impossible to recognize the smell of a strawberry using our mind, but if you remember the movie Hook, where Peter Pan, interpreted by an amazing Robin Williams, was teaching how to taste a fruit that did not exist, you will recognize that nothing is impossible. Joke, jokes apart, of course, it is not difficult to let certain feelings come to the surface by imagination and training. The skill frequently exploits our brain to tap into regions that would remain otherwise inactivated. Key images should be big enough to recognize them with respect to all around them. Problem. How do we do to recognize the correct order of items? The journey method answers this question. The journey method's purpose is to build a glorious memory palace, a concept that you must have heard somehow. A memory palace is a set of stages, also denoted with the term lochi, prepared beforehand to receive the key images necessary to fit an image in story that unfolds throughout the palace as if you were living in a journey. The memory Palace can be made up of indoor and outdoor stages. You can use as memory palace, the rooms of your grannies, uh, aunts, cousins, and friends flat. You can use your working place, the gym, a restaurant, a supermarket, a shopping mall, or even parks, squares, streets, trams, and, and so on. It basically has no limits to the imagination and the extension. Andrea Muzzi the Italian world memory champion uses over 2,000 stages for accomplishing his feats. Clearly, to achieve such an amount of loci, we have to use the entire stage and many parts inside it. The following photos, which have been taken in Prague, explain how to arrange the loci indoor and outdoor. The yellow numbers all represent loci, the singular is locus. 
Therefore, the place containing this seven loci is called stage. A journey is made up of stages which are made up of loci. This restaurant might give the impression of a confusing place due to the many things present in the room. However, this is not the case because I have selected those loci with a precise logical order anti-clockwise from the bottom to the top. Also, there is an alternate between different objects, for example, the white table and the big painting, so there, there is no risk of confusion. The following one is a photo taken outdoor, which confers to our imagination a setting with different constraints. In fact, while indoor stages are somehow limited due to the narrow spaces outdoor, there is much more freedom for placing our key images. Another example of Lochi arranged along one of my journeys in the city of Prague is represented by the facade of uh, Rudolfinum Palace. Which kind of key images best fit outdoor and which indoor stages? I usually use outdoor stages to store theorems and all those data that require space for my imagination. If I want to memorize, for instance, numbers and names, indoor stages are still good, but if I have to store formulas, theorems, or any other complex piece of information, then I opt for outdoor stages. Once you prepare beforehand your memory palace, you will apply the link method to a logic. For example, if I have to store um, the following items uh, like uh, courage, chip, binder, uh, faith, and I use this last picture in front of Rudolfinum, then I would place Achilles, which symbolizes the courage in Locus 1, right by the foot of the goddess, and all of the other key images would be associated with a different Locus. However, as world memory champion Andrea Muzzi recommends, combining up to three key images per locus is good. In other words, to serve the words courage, perch, and cheap, I will merge the related key images in correspondence with locus one. This guarantees to free app space. The three key images could be made interact um, one underneath the next one or along any direction. What matters is the quality with which you memorize them, always apply the key features we talked about. I personally recommend you to combine specific information with specific stages. The following represent my personal choice. I use outdoor stages for memorizing theorem, theorems and key concepts. I use my favorite restaurants and bars for memorizing methods, procedures. I use shopping malls and supermarkets for memorizing lists and tables. I use the internal rooms of inspiring palaces or museums for memorizing math formulas. The reasons are merely, merely subjective and mainly are grounded on my personal habits. Okay, so. For instance, during the winter, I find it incredibly inspiring working in an inspiring cafe uh, atmosphere, which makes me associate this kind of environment with math. I prefer open spaces instead for complex information like theorems or even key concepts. Finally, your key images can be located indoors as seen in the images, but they can also be put according to fixed scheme in which you deliberately place them anti-clockwise along the room's walls. The situation is shown in the following picture. We have five loci within each stage and you will make interacting with your key images uh, on average three per locus, as we said before, at each locus. However, a stage may have a lot more loci inside it. What is crucial, based on my experience, is the clarity with which you define a locus. It is not uncommon to place key images just around the locus or spread them around in the stage, which causes your memory to wobbling. Be scrupulous. Do something with the locus and avoid disseminating the images everywhere, as always the case at the very beginning. Now that you know how it works, the link method, and where to locate the key images, you feed an imaginary story we can proceed further by examining specific techniques to store information of interest. To be proficient with memo techniques, it is of paramount importance to know has your pockets every single locus along your journeys and automatize the process of feeding key images to your stories. If you do not train constantly, then you will struggle to memorize more complex information. Therefore, the purpose is to understand how to memorize numbers and people names and capitalize on this knowledge by doing daily workouts using memorylink.com software. 
Memory League is an online software used by memory champions. You can do tons of training to test your ability to recall different kinds of information like cards, images, name, names, etc. The software is for free for all those who want to make no more than three sessions of training per day. If you want to train more than that, you are asked to pay, if I'm not wrong, around $25. Uh, dollars a year, which is a great deal. I strongly recommend you to pay this uh, yearly amount because you have the chance to do unlimited workouts and even competition with random players. But if you decided not to rely on it, it still is okay. You have the chance to do 10 minutes training every day. I also want to clarify that I am not affiliated with this website. I have subscribed based on Andrea Muzzi's recommendation. And it is a great choice for improving your memory too. So it works, believe me. If you only have three workouts available, then test yourself with names, numbers, and images, or just numbers and names. Consider the following phases. To memorize these four names, apply these steps. Associate a key image to the name. There are basically three ways of doing so, by assonance, elicit another word you know. In my case, the first name, Antonia, reminds me of the word tonica which in Italian is used to define a kind of drink. Therefore, the related key image will be the bottle of this drink. Transform the word the way around. That is, start from the end of the name and see if you can find a new word. In this case, applying this technique leads to something like Tonia, and it does not suggest anything. Maybe Nianto, uh, nothing. This method does not work with this name. I will try with the second one. Pamela. The way around produces funny outputs like Mela Pendi. Uh, this is in Italian. In Italian means, can you hang it for me? Even though with the third name, it works. Don. In this case, the way around produces note. To note means to lower and raise the head. The fourth name, Tom. Using this technique becomes Mot, which indicates a man's girlfriend. So the name recalls you of someone you already know. In this case, borrow some feature belonging to the known person and use it. For example, if Antonia recalls a friend who only uses Louis Vuitton bags, then I will imagine Antonia walking down the street with a big bag by Louis Vuitton. Or I might imagine she's walking hand by hand with my friend, for instance. Two, uh, make interact the key image with the person. Now I will use the key images elicited at the previous point to create a scene containing the features we have discussed earlier. I depict Antonia trying to handle a one kilometer drink and as it begins to drink, she gets totally washed up as if she's taking a shower. Now to make the interaction memorable, it is important to leverage feelings. This is the reason why, for instance, sexual content is powerful for improving recall. I imagine Antonia getting washed up until the point that her t-shirt becomes transparent. Well, you do the story yourself now. As to the second person, Pamela, I imagine she is my wife and that I came home from work and asked her to hang my head on the stand. However, she cannot because she's 100 centimeter tall. So I tell her I probably should have married a taller girl not to have this terrible problem, so she tears my expensive head apart. I try to hear her shouts and the slash of the head as she tears it apart. Make images memorable by tweaking the feelings, senses, image, sights, and actions. Now it is your turn. Create your scenes with the last two persons. You might use my key images, but I strongly recommend you to produce yours because memorization requires subjective involvement. Three associate the key image to a person's feature. This is the standard technique involving one to associate the key image to the feature of that person. For instance, you personally might perceive Antonia's black hair as a crow. You depict in your mind Antonia walking on the street and the black crow uh, landing on her hair with a Schweppes bottle. Uh, there is a lot of space for creativity. Four, Quickly review the key images. Suppose you want to memorize 50 names in five minutes. A key technique that helps you store a huge amount of data involves quickly reviewing your mind a chosen amount of key images before continuing to memorize the rest of the names or any other item. For example, you might decide beforehand that you, you make this review quickly every 10 items. You quickly re retrieve the first 10 items to ascertain they are still in your memory and then quickly to the other 10 and so on. 
the higher the amount of data, the higher the importance played by these reviews. It is a powerful approach that I always recommend you to use because he does wonders. I choose the journey for memorizing names and I may interact with a person with a key image in the first locus of stage number one. An important aspect you should bear in mind is this. Judicious use of Lochi is fundamental for powerful memorization. To use Lochi correctly, you need to make indirect key images with the chosen locus. If you begin to let images floating around Lochi, you will create confusion in your mind, which will strongly affect your ability to recall. Once again, focus a lot on each locus and be precise. If you choose a chair as one of your Lochi, you will visualize the key image doing something specific with the chair or sitting on the chair. I If you want to store a great deal of information quickly, I strongly recommend you to use Andrea Muzzi's idea of placing not more than three key images per uh, locus. For example, I want to store Antonia, Pamela and Donna in correspondence of locus one, represented by the statue's feet. I will imagine Antonia holding a huge drink, asking Pamela to hang her drink on the stand. Pamela hangs the bottle on the stand, but it obviously falls and the bottle gets fragmented into thousands of glass pieces. Thus, Pamela, furious, shouts to her and asks Don to pick every piece up, otherwise she will use the glass against him. Don, of course, nods at her and says, yes, my queen. So how might we optimize this kind of interaction with a technique that includes the features we have discussed? I have personally adopted this strategy. Each key image executes an action over the next key image that is aimed at producing any of the following results, improving, devaluing, transforming. In other words, you will be thinking of Antonia performing an action that must improve, devalue or transform Pamela or any feature of her and so on. So you should think like this. In how many ways might Antonia use her dream to improve, devalue or transform Pamela or any of her features? This implies a lot of things, for instance, uh, Pamela receives the drink and after drinking, she becomes a top model with a big breast. Everyone around takes a photo of her. Pamela receives the bottle, but this devalues, devalues her. She can no longer find her wallet and she calls the police or her boss finds her drinking this bottle and for this reason, she gets fired. Pamela receives the drink and she gets transformed into a dragon, spitting the drink over all the people around. This requires a great amount of creativity, of course, which is actually great news. To explain to you why it is it, it is the case, I read you a short passage written by eight world memory champion Dominic O'Brien. Studies show that we use our fluid intelligence in a wide variety of cognitive tasks and that is critical to our success at work and in education, especially when the task in hand involves the need to solve complex problems. It is usually measured by tracking performance in psychometric testing, recognizing sequences in patterns and so on. Although we can become accustomed to these sorts of tests by doing them often, practicing doesn't actually have very much influence over improving fluid intelligence at all. And that's why memory training with regard to improving fluid intelligence is so special. Training your short-term working memory and accessing your fluid intelligence uses some of the same area of the brain, so memory training can have a big impact on fluid intelligence. The more you train, the greater the gains in your ability to apply logic and reasoning and the more acute your intuition. In other words, this four is not meaningless, but it even helps you improve your fluid intelligence. We will memorize numbers using the shape system and the Dominic system. A system is a set of coded items, in this case numbers. Shape system only codes the basic 10 digits of the decimal number system, whereas Dominic system codes the numbers from 0 to 99. The following picture shows the associations between a digit and its key image according to the shape system. Instead, the Dominic system is more complicated than shape system, but it will allow us to store a huge quantity of numbers. 
Following associations represent Dominic system. These basic associations uh, allows us to, to cover the whole range of numbers from 0 to 99. For example, uh, let's give a look at this. Uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, are coded using the OA, OB, OC, and, and so on. How might we use these groups of letters? We will be using them as the two initial letters of the first name and the last name of a person that first comes into our minds. On top of making such an association, we will be conferring the, to each associated person property or an action. I give an example. Number 18 uh, is coded uh, um, using the letters A and H. Uh, in this case, stands by Adolf Hitler. Uh, the action I attribute to him is the Nazi gesture. Then we have number 21, coded uh, using the letters B and A, will be the code for Bernard Arnault. His action involves holding a Louis Vuitton bag. Number 27 will be the code for Bill Gates. His action is to carry the windows of my ex-flat. As you will notice in the following picture, which shows a sample of my associations I did some years ago, uh, and which in part uh, are drawn from Dominique's, uh, some of them do not logically come from the letters. For example, one refers to uh, as Julio Cesar, ex-football goalie of Inter Milan, holding a football with his clothes. Why? Because I give priority to the first stronger impression I get. So this is easy. You have to apply the link method. For instance, uh, you want to memorize uh, the following number to 171,821. You will memorize groups of four digits at once as follows. 27 paps up Bill Gates, while 18 Adolf Hitler making Nazi gesture. So memorizing uh, 2,718 2718 involves lending to Bill Gates Hitler's action. I will thus imagine Bill Gates making Hitler's gesture. Since 21 is Bernard Arnault, I will imagine Bill Gates making a gesture to his boss, Bernard Arnault. If you need to store odd numbers, for example, 271, you will employ the single digits shape system. Now it is your turn. Allocate 30 minutes or one hour a day and build your own associations. It is not a half hour task though. It takes time, but it is fundamental because if you will do a daily workout using Memory League online software, it will boost your speed and memory skills. So that's all for today. I'm sure you will find useful these ideas. If you have any questions as always on how to apply the techniques, just drop a line below. See you soon.